man, this is really living. We're committed to the art and nothing. Stop us, not even a train, plain track to all of us as we feel the rhythm, the sound, the marrow of our bones. Hey guys, Bukula here, gonna give you a video. I'm giving you one here in a day or so. There just hasn't been a whole lot of stuff going on. You know, we had that geomagnetic, uh, well, it really wasn't even a storm, guys. I mean, it, you got the storm level for a minute from those coronal holes we've been talking about. And our, I've been showing you guys the magneto pause models, um, all those kinds of things. Those are all valid, but it wasn't something that turned out to be a huge, huge hit or any kind of disruptions here. Um, I think the earthquakes probably peaked a little bit and did you know the typical stuff that happens when we get hit but i'm gonna i'm gonna report on something here that i don't typically report on um and i'm gonna use it to kind of try to help you guys understand believe it or not uh charged particles and why the density of it actually matters and how basically how they kind of work um but first we're going to go into this story you know all the news outlets have picked this up Okay, just to let you know, uh, our alternative news outlets, uh, the mainstream, all those things, they picked it up. Okay, um, <laughs> so it, and they're all showing the same video. So this is just basically me showing you the video and, and telling you what actually happened. Um, this happened on Monday. Okay, this this can tell you right here how somebody can try to keep something a secret and it work. Um, this happened on Monday over in Russia. Today's Thursday. Um, going into Friday, so, you know, take that for what it's worth, but, yeah, um, they were able to keep it on the down low for that long. Um, don't know how, because a lot of people seen this, but I guess that's just a different part of the world. So, what we're going to do is we're going to watch this first, and then I'll talk to you. Okay, so what just happened there is what I'm going to use to kind of help you guys understand a couple things about what happens, you know, on our sun when stuff does happen. Um, what I'm talking about is, if you guys noticed, you've seen the big flash in the mushroom cloud before you heard the explosion itself, right? That's the difference of how things travel, okay? What you seen was what you seen. That was moving at the speed of light, right? And then what you heard was actually moving at the speed of sound. Okay, and I'm, I think those kind of vary depending on the thickness of the atmosphere. Whole whole lots of different things. Not the speed of light doesn't, but I think like sound has to have, uh, not to go too much into detail, has to have basically particles that bounce off of and create waves, all those kinds of things. Anyway, um, without I'm not going to go into a big rant about that, but you know we'll we'll rewatch that again. But this, this time when you watch it, watch it with that knowledge, okay? Okay, so yeah, now that you kind of get that in your head, you know, um, we'll watch it one more time. not just i'm not trying to make a dig on anybody but i'm telling you right now america is not the only country out there that's fat <laughs> okay i'm not saying nothing bad about this dude but i mean this if you look around yeah these guys ain't missing a meal either so um but anyway um i'm not making light of this situation either guys okay 
fact of the matter is somebody died i think maybe two at this point i can't remember exactly it's either one or two people got hurt um so yeah that that's a sad thing it really is uh so but you know this happened they were able to keep it a secret for a few days now it's all out but here it is right so you know i even i've even heard like black rain now um what causes that well there's a whole lot of things that can cause that. It's not it's not like nuclear winter or anything like that. Um, I'm not sure if you guys remember, but way back in the day during the the Gulf War with uh, Iraq and Saddam Hussein and all that, um, he was burning oil fields. You guys remember that? I'm sure anybody that was alive uh, then knew that. But that would create you know, it would add that kind of a, a particle into the air. And it, when it did rain, it would rain black. Okay. Can you imagine that going outside and it raining black on you? And it, there's probably so many different things that could cause that. But obviously this actually happened. They gave their, they passed down even 16,000 citizens right there in that general area. They gave them iodine pills. Uh, that's what's supposed to, you know, get the radiation and stuff. So that tells you that it either was like a, a nuclear thing. At the very least, it was uh, radiation of some sort, okay? Um, they were scared about that. That's why they gave it to their citizens. Um, so just kind of keep that in mind. But what I'm going to do is I'm, gonna, I'm just going to roll this back a little bit to the right about, okay, this right here, if you can think of this as being the sun, okay, that would be what we would call a solar flare. Now let me show you what the CME would be. That sound you just heard, that's the CME. Okay, that's the difference of what I've tried to explain before. Solar flares traveling at the speed of light. So we basically get no warning from solar flares. The light we see from our sun happened eight minutes ago. Okay, roughly. So the light we see from the sun takes eight minutes to get here. Because most people believe that it's 93 million miles away. And I say this about every video when I talk about this. I know there's people out there that don't believe that. And that's fine, actually. I mean, I have no problem with people not believing that. Um, you know, it is what it is. But for me, I believe it's 93 million miles away. So the speed of light takes it eight minutes to get here, if you do mathematics, roughly. And then the CME would have been the sound, okay, because it has mass. All right, it's, it's shooting that off. So it takes it. On the low end, two days to get here. On the high end, five. Okay? Depending on how, how strong it was, all, a bunch of different things come into factor there. So that's the difference. The solar flares traveling at speed of light, we get absolutely no warning off of those things. Any warning we got, we wouldn't be able to react anyway in eight minutes. Okay? Number two, the CME, you know, we, sometimes we have, we have a little bit advanced warning there. Because we actually see it happen before it gets here. Okay. That's why we're able to do at least some sort of preparation. Maybe shut the satellites off. They go into that safe mode. You know, people talk about that I talk about. Um, but this is what happens, right? So that is the difference. All right. So that would be your solar flare. That would be your CME, okay? That is the difference. So, um, and then, you know, I'm gonna talk about density here too. I'm gonna pause it for a second. All right, guys, I got you over at planetxnews.org. Guys, I don't just say this to promote Scott's channel, okay? That's not why I do this, all right? He doesn't need my help to get views. His information is awesome, okay? You know, so those that have sent me emails or got on me about stuff like that. I'm telling you, this is what it is. I actually do go here to go to these links. I read these articles. 
it's good information. He does awesome work, guys. Okay. Um, he is a very good friend of mine. But that would not stop me, even if he wasn't, from coming here and using this this information, getting this information, using these tools. Okay. So anyway, um, yeah, you see some of the articles here. That right there should bother everybody. Okay. We've all been talking about how Dr. Albers was sick. Um, you know, there's a whole lot of questions going on there. Scott had these smart meters that they installed in his yard without even asking. They don't have to ask. There's ordinances and stuff. But the, the stuff coming off of it was worse than um, your cell phones. Okay? 100 times greater than cell phones. So it's right there. Okay? So, yeah. That's this one article that he put here. There's a bunch of stuff here, guys. Okay? Um, but when I talk about using the tools, I, if you're on your phone, you can go down about halfway, which is what I'm doing right here. And again, I record on my phone. I do my research on my computer that Mike had gotten me early on in my channel. Okay? Shout out to Mike. Awesome dude. <laughs> He's, he's one of my good friends also, okay? Um, it's amazing I've made such good friends. It really is. I didn't expect this at all. So, anyway, um, here's the links, okay? You just scroll down. Here's all the links to the tools that I go to. I use almost every one of these. I look at these about daily, okay? Some of them multiple times a day. Now, if you're on your PC, it would be off to the right. Okay, and it wouldn't be very far down, but all these tools are awesome. This is all, I mean, if you guys want a good start, this is where you go. Even if you're not getting a good start, you would use these daily, all right? So what we're going to do is I'm going to get, this is where I go to this different magnetopause, magnetosphere uh, models, okay? Um, so yeah, I'm going to pause it, guys. Uh, well, maybe not. Might not have to. Let's see how fast it loads. But that's the velocity one. Okay. Um, sometimes it takes it a minute to load. Uh, if it starts taking a minute, I will pause it. All right, guys. This is the velocity one. Okay. And um, this is the basically it's the solar wind speed. If you look at the the key here, see how it says negative 600, 600. Um, that basically directional. Um, but yeah. I'll just show you this one real quick. Um, this is this is the speed of the actual uh, solar wind. It's just showing you how it varies and when it hits our magneto magnetosphere, what it does to it. Okay. Now you can take this one and add high, a higher density particle moving at the same velocity. And you would see a much bigger reaction. Okay. And what do I mean by that? Well, this one down here is the density. Okay. How do we know how dense it is? Well, this tool is showing us, okay? Again, you got to look at the key. You see where the white is? It says zero, okay? That's a very low dense particle. All right, this is a higher dense particle as it gets bluer. So when you see the white, that means it's not very dense in that area. Where you see the blue, that's where the, the charged particles are very, very dense, okay? So we'll watch that for a second. Okay, and you can see how they come in waves. We see bigger waves on this particular model because it's showing density. It's not showing the speed, it's showing the density of it. Okay, so anytime that the size of the charged particle changes, basically, you're going to see a different uh, signature. Okay, now I'm going to explain this to you real quick. Now, just kind of picture this in your mind. Take a snowball. All right, and you and you take a, a light source. I only say light. Say like a a heat source. Okay, and you and you start moving that snowball closer and closer to that heat source. What happens? Well, what happens is it starts to melt, right, and becomes smaller. Not as intense. Not as dense. Okay, I'm going to use that word kind of broadly there. I know there's a whole lot of different uh, vocabulary we could go into there but for what I'm trying to explain here this is what this is all right so the heat source would be earth's atmosphere 
Okay, the snowball would be the charged particle being shot at us from the sun. As it hits our atmosphere, those particles start getting peeled off because our atmosphere is eating it up. Okay, so the bigger the snowball is, the more of it that's going to actually get to us as it gets to the gets to our magnetosphere gets into our atmosphere right so if you can picture that that's exactly what these particles are doing they're you know a bigger particle is going to affect us more that's that's my point here okay so when we're talking about this the density is very important when we're talking about solar wind and what what the solar winds actually carrying okay that's what it's doing is carrying those charged particles, which essentially is the solar wind, but it moves it at different speed. The speed is important, but the density is just as important, if not more. Because if we take a, a, a higher density charged particle and it hits us at a lower speed, we're still going to see a big reaction from it. And you could take a higher, a smaller particle, shoot it at us faster, and it's not going to hurt us as bad. That's my point. So if you can picture it coming at us like a snowball, and it's just kind of peeling away, guys. Kind of like, you know, when a meteor hits our atmosphere. It's kind of the same thing. It kind of peels away and burns up, right? Starts off real big, but ends up small. Correct? That's exactly the, the difference here. So the, the bigger the object, the more of it gets through. That's why the density matters. It hits us harder. Okay? All right, guys, got you back here at the SDO. Um, I'm going to show you guys something here, too, that, that uh, I want you guys to see. I did a video on this a while back. It's about the SDO and when it gets eclipsed and why it does what it does. I'll leave a link to that video. Um, please go back and watch that if you want a more in-depth uh, explanation on why we see this do this. I'm going to give you a, a basic overview. But um, anyway, you're going to see it get eclipsed. And yes... I fell for this too at first. I thought this was, oh my gosh, what's going on, right? So you're going to see people make videos. It doesn't necessarily mean that they're doing it on purpose, but some of them are, okay? They're sensationalizing stuff. Um, we don't need to do that um, because it doesn't need to be done, uh, for one. But for two, it's just, yeah, you just shouldn't do that. <laughs> But what you're going to see, again, you're going to see an eclipse. And again, it's easy to fall for this, to think that this might be really something that really we need to be paying attention to a whole lot. But they they tell you when this is going to happen. And I'm going to, I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. Uh, anyway, so what you're going to see, from you're going to see from the bottom left, and it'll move to the top right. Okay, you see that? Bottom left to top right. Now, what's weird is you're going to see it move, you're going to see it come back into view the opposite direction. And if you think about it on a typical eclipse, if this was a normal, like say the moon was eclipsing our sun, right? If the light, if it was moving this way, okay, it would get dark here first, right? And it would move this way and the whole sun would go dark. Well, which area would get light first? Well, this area would, because it would keep moving that direction, right? Well, that ain't what we see here, okay? And I'm going to explain to you why. Okay, bottom left, top right, top right to bottom left, right? Now, something as a note right here, I want you guys to look at something. Do you see this angle, that flat line? Okay, when it starts reappearing again, you're going to see it, and it's going to be more this, this direction. How can that happen? Right? That's what you're going to ask yourself. Because I ask myself the same thing, and this is how people get fooled. This is how people, um, you know, get, get to the wrong information the wrong way. And sometimes it's not intentional, but sometimes it is. So, but just note, note that, okay? And as this moves... We get it back to the right spot, okay? Now it's reappearing. You see the angle? See how it's more vertical there? This is when it happened. See how it's more horizontal? And then it kind of turned like that. 
Well, let me show you why. Um, so I'm going to pause this. I'll leave a link to this. This is the SDO homepage, basically. Um, multiple people do these, okay? Um, there's a lot of organizations out there that use this information and put it in their own uh, website and stuff. Um, the reason why they can do that is because it's technically paid for by our tax dollars. So anybody's welcome to use this information. That's why they're able to do this. But what this, what this, this is a NASA site here, and it tells you um, exactly where the SDO's at, and it'll show you. So what we're going to do is we're going to click right here. It says, where is SDO, right? Well, it shows us. Okay. Now we can go into the data points, which we're not, because it gets very, very uh, technical, very, very quick. And it would be so, I'd have to do a series of videos just to explain some of this stuff. But um, you can see it, velocity angle, propagation error. Um, you know, when you talk about propagation, it's, it's basically referring to like radio stuff. Um, ham operators really are concerned with that because it affects their ability to transmit. Um, and here's, basically it shows you what it looks like and where the stuff is being viewed from. Okay, but this is the one that I want to use. Okay, and again, go back and watch my other video, or other people have done videos on this also. Now, what's key is geosynchronicity, okay? The SDO is in geosynchronous orbit. What does that mean? Okay, that means that in relation to the Earth, this satellite is always in this position. It rotates with the Earth. At the same speed the earth rotates okay it's always looking at the sun so in other words if the sdo is here on this figure eight pattern which is what it does and that's going to come into play here in a minute it will never do this figure eight pattern over here it won't be there it's always here okay that's what i mean by geosynchronicity if it actually you know moved at all it wouldn't be in ge geosynchronous orbit. That's what that means. Okay. Um, it's in basically a fixed position in relation to the Earth. So, with that being said, this helps me explain what's going on here. This thing's looking at the sun. Okay. If you can picture it being up here at, at its apex, right? Up here right, right before it makes its turn. Okay, if it was in that position and something passed in front of it, okay, it would start moving that direction, right? Well, as it come around the backside here, it would look as if this object, the object itself, went the wrong direction, right? Well, that ain't what's going on. The satellite is what's moving, okay? It just happened to be eclipsed by something at the time of when it would actually make it look like it moved a different direction okay so with that being said um, i'm not going to go too much more into that just remember geosynchronistic orbit i've actually talked about that before it just means it's in the same spot in relation to the earth but make no no bones about this somebody's going to make a video on this saying that this is the end end of all end of all right <laughs> But this is something that happens very, very frequently throughout the year. Okay? It just happens. It's just, you can't help it. You know, this thing can get eclipsed by the moon um, when it's in certain positions. It can get, actually, I think it can actually get eclipsed. I think the Earth might be able to actually eclipse itself when it's in the right exact position. But I'm not really for sure on that one. But I'm pretty sure that's how it works. Uh, but, you know, you got any object out there. It's in between this satellite and the sun. Okay. So, the Earth itself is actually comes between the satellite and the, and the sun just because of the rotation of the Earth. This stays in that position. But, because of the figure eight, most of the time we don't have to worry about the Earth being in the way. All right. That's kind of what's going on here. I just wanted to try to give you a little short explanation on that but i'll leave a link to my video um, that i already did on this and more in depth but don't don't think this is something crazy because again you're going to see people out there making this out to be something that it's not and a lot of it may not be intentional it may just because they just don't understand it but a lot of it yes there's people out there that i know know that this isn't something 
and they still say that it is. Okay, guys, got you back over to SDO. I want to take you back over here for a second. But what we're looking at here, guys, remember me talking about the, how the equator of the sun, right? The Earth strike zone would be kind of just south of the equator. So when we see coronal holes pass in that section, that's when it really affects Earth big time, okay? Um, why we're going to see a lull in the, in the activity is this area here is in the Earth strike zone, okay? It's actually rotating away already. Um, it was here for about a day, okay? So when we do see these winds, it'll last about a day, a little bit more. And it'll probably take it about 36 to 48 hours. Well, let's see here, probably longer than that. Um, I guess it could be here by then, but two to three, four days max, probably before it gets here and we'll see, you know, reactions here on the Earth and our magnetosphere. Um, but why we're seeing a lull is because that the other coronal holes that were giving us the stuff this past week have actually rotated off, okay? They may have even closed up. We just can't see them. So I just wanted to point that out. But we will see an increase in solar wind again. Um, how it affects us the most, you know, if it's very, very dense stuff, uh, yeah. I mean, it could do something, but we just don't know until we start seeing some of that stuff come this way. Um, and Scott has a different technique, guys. I've explained this before. He shows those particles underneath this atmosphere of the sun, the corona, and it's really cool, the technique he's developed, and it really shows it really, really well. So please go check that out. But, um, but yeah. All right, guys, I got you over here at Seeds, okay? Um, I'm going to talk about this just for a second. Okay, we're, we're still not able to see data. See the gray boxes? Okay. Those, that data is missing. Um, there was more, but they added some. They actually put some of the data back in. Uh, you know, we always question when that happens. What's going on? Are they trying to hide something? What's happening? Well, again, we were getting that solar storm. Well, it really didn't turn out to be a whole lot. It was a minor thing. But sometimes these satellites do go into safe mode, and I've talked about that before. That could have been part of this. Don't know. Um, I don't see why they would feel the need to leave them down for that long of a time. Maybe they were having technical difficulties. Again, they're taking information from the observatory and putting it in their own format here. Okay. This isn't done in a central, I guess, database. Okay. If you guys want to use, the, use those kinds of terms. All right. But, you know, we always got a question, right? So we do get to see some more. It's, it's back up and running now. Um, but I do want to show you guys something. Again, this goes back to people not actually knowing what's going on. And if they do, then they're very, very dishonest. Okay? Or sensationalizing stuff, just trying to get views or what have you. Um, I don't know. I haven't seen actually anybody make a video on this yet, but they might. Um... It could just be because they just don't know. Okay, I like to give people the benefit of the doubt on that. But, you know, I'm also not so blind to think that people aren't out there doing it just for the wrong stuff. But anyway, um, I'm going to pause this. Okay, what I'm talking about, guys, is this. All right. Inevitably, we're going to see somebody come out with a video saying that this is whatever they want to call it. It shouldn't be there, that kind of thing. Well, I think this is Venus. If we go look at the Stellarium or any of the the solar system uh, software that you can get and go look at it in the positions of planets and stuff, um, you're going to see that that's a planet. Um, it's probably Venus. I think it is. Um, you know, if we could go go to Sechi, Sechi's been down for a while. Um, the movie tool hasn't been working. Um, they're supposed to be updating it, but it's been down for like almost two months. So... But they actually label these. They'll tell you it's whatever planet it is. But don't don't fall into that, okay? Um, just kind of know that. I just want to give you a heads up on that. Um, but something else, you know. Um, I'm not sure if this is anything, but I did see that in this particular capture. I don't know what that is. Um, it could be something. It could be nothing. I haven't really given it much uh, attention yet. But, uh, 
<laughs> anyway, um, yeah, so, but we did see some activity, you know, it's not real bad, it's not nothing to really be too freaked out about, but you're going to see, like I said, you're going to see some activity coming off here and here, um, you know, wasn't no big CMEs or big solar flares there, at least not yet, so, I just want to point that out to you guys, um, now I'll end with this, guys. I'll give you guys a a, um, a roll of the models here after this. Um, I'll put it at the end of this video, put it with some music, and let you guys check it out. Uh, you know, I'll show you the magnetosphere models and all that, like I have been here as of late. But um, this is, uh, I'll leave with this. This is the current solar data, okay? Um, this is stuff that we just look at for information. Um, the elect electron flux doesn't look like we're seeing a whole lot there. Okay, if, if we did see something, it would be like a spike. You would see it pop down like that. Okay, and that could be a whole lot of different things. And then right here, guys, is the KP. Okay, this shows you right here that we are not in any kind of storm level. Okay, <laughs> not at all. Um, if it gets up to five, it, they consider that a minor storm. You know, then it ramps up from there, just like thunderstorm warnings, which I've explained to you in the past. But, um, you know, here's the x-ray flux. Nothing really too much to talk about there. Um, this is the, um, uh, the magnometer. Okay. Um, you do see a couple. I'm not sure if that was a, a flaw or not. It, I think it might have been like a, some sort of a burst of what we've seen. Um, sometimes we see those things. From the planet x object that's actually reacting with our sun and i've talked about that at depth before um we can't really call it solar wind because we didn't see anything on the sun at that time so it had to come from somewhere right either cosmic rays or some other celestial object like the planet x object and it's highly highly strong magnetic field okay it does it has a very strong magnetic field it's a system too guys it's not just one object so that also leads me into saying, hey guys, you know, listen, just because we catch the planet S object in a certain position on the sun and we're able to say, hey, yes, it's going to be here, here in the 28 day orbit that, you know, we've talked about multiple times. Um, you know, it's the one that Scott has mapped out and pretty much proven with, with uh, observational evidence, um, you know, that, hey, at least whatever object this is, it's here. This is what we're showing you that's here on this rotation, cycle, orbit, whatever you want to call it, right? But the other part of that conversation is there's more than just one object, okay? So they can be in different parts of what we're seeing on these tools, different locations, okay? So kind of keep that in mind. Um, we, we can still see stuff on, on in other positions, it doesn't mean it's not an actual object there, like a stellar core or another part of this system, right? So, um, I just wanted to point that out because, you know, I do take a hammering in the comment section sometimes over stuff like that. But yeah, so there's that. Um, I don't know why it's not letting me. Yeah, it's not letting me. <laughs> okay. Anyway, yeah, I'll just back off. There we go. Okay. Here's another better view of the KP. Okay. Um, and then right here, guys, this is the uh, the proton flux. Just like you got the electron flux. Those are electrons it's seeing. These are the protons that it's seeing. And we're not seeing any kind of big disturbance or nothing. So I just wanted to show you guys that. Um, hopefully you guys kind of get an idea about the you know, the SDO and why it looks like when it does have an eclipse, like why it looks like it could be something bad. But I've hopefully you guys understand that it's really not. It's it's just what it does and how it moves. Um, you know, so hopefully you guys kind of learn something from that. And I hope I uh, gave you guys a pretty decent explanation about the density too. you know, how how it affects us and why it affects us and how it matters. You know, just remember, it's the snowball analogy. You know, a bigger snowball will be 
more intact as it gets closer to a heat source, the bigger that it starts out. Okay, so when that charged particle hits our atmosphere, it starts peeling it away, right? So a bigger charged particle is actually going to hit it harder, right? So that's kind of what we're talking about. So God bless. Yeshua saves, and uh, you can drink this Kool-Aid.